Okay. Hi, uh, Nadine Obershawn from Nadine's Dots. Um, I just wanted to share with you some a process that I do to make pendants. Um, I use composite mold materials, and you can look up online. They have a website to buy the materials at at composimold.com. And it's a this is um, a mold reusable mold making material, and you heat it up in the microwave, and it becomes a liquid. Right now, I'm going to show you how to make. A mold of the cabochon. I, what I did is I bought a glass cabochon and I'm going to replicate that. I'm going to put it in the cup and then I'm going to pour this mold making material right into the cup and cover the cabochon. And And I did it without making a big, huge mess. And that I'm going to let sit and let it harden. And it's going to look like this when you take it out. This one I made a mold of a rock to give you an idea. And then you just release your piece. And now you have a mold to pour into. Um, this one was a rock, obviously. This one will be the cabochon. And then once you release the, you have this indentation for the cabochon. And then I used some, uh, a composite stone making material and I poured it into the mold. And that's what this is. I then fit it. <laughs> This is going to be, I should have had this out. There you go. I took a piece of sandpaper and I just sand shaped it and I kept on shaping it until it fit into this bezel. At that point, I paint it black and then I paint my design on it. So this gives you a 3D surface to work on. Normally what you'd have to do is paint the back side of these glass cabochons and then place it into your bezel but you don't get the detail as you do having a nice bezel that you can paint on. And then after I paint the bezel then I seal it with a UV resin or I use a diamond glaze material. I also use um, E6000 glue to glue the piece into the bezel so that really holds it well. I feel like I, I'm looking up at the person that's videoing this, so <laughs> yeah, you can see me on the camera, right? <laughs> this material is called, what is it called, Stan? Chime in. Impressive putty. Impressive putty. Impressive reusable mold making putty. So Stan, um, nicely, you put it in the microwave for how long? Uh, 23 seconds. Okay. 25 seconds. And it becomes pliable. And where is the other bezel? Have a Shoot. I had two. There it is. It disappeared. But this is another way to make molds of different things. And it could be, I mean, it could be a button. It could be a, a, a rock. It could anything. So you let that harden. And again, it makes a, that's the stone, it makes a nice mold of that cabochon. And it's just another way to get your um, stone for your cabochon. So, and mass produce them. And these are reusable. I mean, you can remelt them. The same with the um, blocks of composite mold. You can put them back and it, heat it up in the microwave and reuse it. That's the beauty of it. Um, and you can reuse the molds over and over again. So that is the process, really. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that I use of the composite mold line is these resins. And another process to um, do a pendant is I take the bezel and I line the bezel with resin. And um, <clears throat> composite mold has a black resin and a black colorant. So you can line this and it becomes a flat surface and you can paint on that and then you just seal over with some more resin. So, and that's a different look. It's not domed like this, but flat. Um, so I guess 
what I can do is go ahead and mix some resin up and show you how I do it. I'm just going to First, I make a level surface, and what I did is I made feet with some just modeling clay, and I, you place it down on a piece of glass or tile, whatever one might have, and then you use your little level, and you make you get your surface level, and I did this beforehand, so it's pretty good. Um, you get your bezels ready, and I don't put them on the middle because the the um, Get the bale makes it an uneven surface, so you got to line these up on the edges so the bales are hanging over the edge. So I'm going to use the black, and it's one part A and one part B. So when I, I'm going to put gloves on. <laughs> I'm just doing it, mixing up a half a teaspoon at a time of each. And I find that if you wipe off your measuring stick between each, you don't have to throw away your measuring. Because if you put, don't do that, then you have a mess inside <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so this is the thicker, this is very thick. And this is um, black resin colorant. And even though the resin's black, I want a very deep black in the bezels. So let's see how this comes out. And you mix for about, I don't know, two, three minutes, two minutes, whatever. I usually do, yeah, a minute. Oh, minute's yeah. good, yeah, something in that ballpark. I usually tend to overmix. <laughs> Can't hurt. No. So then what I do is I just pour them in to the bezels and a little at a time so you don't overflow. And look, I have a lot left over. <laughs> little goes a long way. I think that's the biggest question everybody has is like how many stones can you cover with um, a bottle of the resin and I, I had a eight ounce supply four and four and I used it for a year and I paint a lot <laughs> so a little goes a long way so right now I'm just working the resin to the edge of the bezel I don't want it to go over You just want to coat, coat it.
handy dandy torch. And that's going to make a beautiful surface to paint on. There, perfect. Um, pour some in here and make a. Um, will I have enough? We'll see. You know what? I'm going to do it in this one. <laughs> That has the stone in it, and I'm afraid it's going to get in the resin. Yeah, I'm going to do it in this one. So don't waste anything. may not fill the whole thing, but it'll have a flat back and I can attach um, a sterling silver, silver veil to it and have a necklace. Actually, it's not too much. I love these small craft sticks to do the little work when you're working with... Yeah, you yeah. that, yeah. It's a little better than a toothpick. It, yeah, it, it gives you it, something it mix. to mix it yeah. with. So yeah, I'm. I never waste a drop. <laughs> yeah, I have silicone molds like the measuring cups at home that are about this size, and then if you just leave your resin what's ever left over in them, right. it pops right out, and then I can make a pendant out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I use everything. So that these would sit overnight. And then you can paint them the next day, and it comes out something like that. So, I guess the next step, what do you think? Is that, show, that shows the whole process, doesn't it? That's it the, does, that's except cool. for me painting. <laughs> painting, do you want to? I can paint do, for a little while. Do you want to do a little painting? Yeah, we'll just paint, we'll, and, yeah. And then we'll draw, finish with that. Um, yeah. I kind of, it does show, I mean, that's cool. So you make your mold, you pour your stone into your mold, whichever one you decide to use, either one works. Then you paint them black or the resin, you make a resin one. I found that either one works fine if you have resin. I think monetarily, wouldn't it, isn't it, it would be le the least expensive route to go would be the stone. Stone would be a lot cheaper than yeah, so anything, yeah. Depending yeah. on, I yeah, mean, which one? This is the resin. This is the stone. Um, this is the resin. That's the stone. Cool. And I mean, the only reason this is shiny, shiny, is because I, yeah. I put, I put some shellac um, varnish on it to make it shiny. Nice. So that's why. Um, you can. I, I sometimes will paint them when they're sealed. It just makes it so when you make a mistake, it's easier to get off. Um, but I never make mistakes. Of course not. <laughs> So. You don't either, huh? Yeah, no. And That's then, why a composite mold exists. There you go. I'm just going to look at that. Cool. So you never even introduced oh. yourself, so... I'm Stan. <laughs> <laughs> this is Stan, maker of composite mold materials, uh, Nadine from Nadine's Dots, and thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of making a pendant. Thank you very much, and thank you, Nadine, for doing this. You're welcome. All right. I like that. It's easy enough. Easy enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you can put it over different sized things, to, and it just gives you a guide to start your middle. Sometimes I get it. I almost made a mistake. Sometimes I don't. So, I suppose it's a little, oh, that's the silicone. Um, oh, yeah. never painted on camera before. <laughs> Gotta pretend that nothing's going on. So this is coming up from above? Uh, yes, and yeah, straight ahead and above, yep. Okay. And that's in the way. Okay, see, I don't, I'm not a good...
see I put one down. I made a mistake. And so this is good. People will see how I fix the mistake. 